There was a woman, she was laying dead on the ground with a bike under her. So it literally looked like she was just riding her bike and somebody shot her. They say they're trying to hit military installations, yet they're they're hitting civilian targets and um, you know disabling civilians from having electricity and water. When you left Ukraine, what, what is the current state of the conflict out there? Um, he said, you know, when this whole thing started, uh, I mean, he was, he, he was just in disbelief. He couldn't believe it. You know, he got a, he got a call from his friend at 4 a.m. saying that, uh, you know, the troops have uh, come in and, and, the, and the war has started and there's military action all over the place. And, and you're just kind of like in this shock and disbelief. Um, and obviously, as the time goes on, you realize, you know, this is the reality and it's, and it's happening. Um, you know, and it's, I mean, it's tragic. War is tragic no matter where it happens or how it happens, especially when it happens on your homeland. As far as, you know, his view on the whole thing, I mean, he's baffled. He, he has no earthly idea why why Russia would invade Ukraine, what they want there, why the president of Russia would turn his people against Ukraine, uh, you know, so drastically. Um, you know, what is their objective? Uh, um, they're obviously there on the false pretenses and, and everything they've been saying is false. Um, you know, they say they're trying to hit military installations, yet they're they're hitting civilian targets and, um, you know, disabling civilians from having electricity and water. Um, people are suffering. Uh, there's obviously been reports and, and it's all true of horrendous atrocities that the soldiers on the ground are are conducting against the, the, the civilian populations with women being raped and just people tortured. It's just, it's just terrible. I mean, this whole thing is terrible. Hopefully it'll end soon. Um, he just, he's just baffled. There's, there's no, there's no rhyme or reason to it. There's no logic to it. So. About the reports of um, Russia deliberately targeting civilians and committing atrocities and acts of torture were these things that you witnessed firsthand yourself. Ooh. Listen, I can tell you what I've seen myself. Um, you know, no rumors, no some stories. Somebody said to somebody, um, when we were liberating my hometown, there's a home, there's a town right next to mine called Butre. It's right next to our hometown. And when we went in to liberate it uh, from the Russian troops, which we did, there was a very long street there, and they named it the Street of Death. And on this street, to the left and to the right, were lined up nothing but corpses. Corpses of women, children, elderly women. You know, there was a woman, um, he remembers seeing her. She was laying dead on the ground with a bike under her. So it literally looked like she was just riding her bike and somebody shot her um, and she was just dead. And this was a very long street and endless amount of people. And none of them were military. None of them were soldiers. None of them were involved in any kind of military activity. These were all civilians. These were all women, children, elderly. And, you know, as the people that survived that were hidden, as they saw the Ukrainian troops, as they saw them basically walking through, you know, they came out and obviously they were in tears. They were hugging him. They just couldn't believe that, you know, they, they've been liberated, that the city's been freed. And as they kind of walked around the town delivering fresh bread, because it's all they had to people, you know, people would come out and, and just cry and were just happy to eat. And, you know, it's just, it's terrible. And, and he doesn't understand what would possess a soldier to be this cruel? What what kind of hate could they build up against somebody they don't even know? You know, to kill a child, to kill a mother, um, to shoot an elderly woman for no reason. Um, you know, or, or who would give an order to do such a thing? And who would execute it? Where does all this hate come from? Um, against civilians, it's just, it's unbelievable. It's, it's just impossible to, to fathom. And these are things he saw with his own eyes as, as they were liberating the city. This isn't just some, you know, fairy tale, some story that somebody told him. Um, and as far as bombings, he saw that too, you know, civilian installations being bombed for no reason.
Um, they're not providing any strategic advantage. They're just bombed because they can. I wanted to add to it, like even right now, you hear, you know, there's bombings in Kiev, there's bombings everywhere. There's no rhyme or reason to it. These aren't military installations. This is just bombing to, because they can. It's just to, you know, disrupt the flow, disrupt any kind of return to normalcy. You know, you, you could be a person that just left the house just to go get some food and all of a sudden a bomb will hit and you'll die just for no reason. Um, you know, it's just it's just hard to wrap your head around it. Like this, this conflict is so mind blowing and, and, and the atrocities that these people are performing is so terrible that you just start to wonder like, what kind of human being would do this? There's no human being would do this because they have no reason to do this. There's no reason to kill children and 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 elderly and you know this street that he spoke of in uh Buka that 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 the troops laid in so these corpses laid there for two to three weeks the soldiers would not let people take their loved ones away and bury them or or just get them off the street they would literally just leave it there you know like who does that like why why would you do that there was footage of you retrieving your belt or belt from the rubble um, how did that feel to do such an act? So when the when the war first started, obviously, I wasn't thinking about any of that. But as as we've liberated uh, my city and the cities nearby in central Ukraine, and you know things, I wouldn't say it went back to normal, but got more normal than than they were. Um, you know, I started I started thinking about my belt. So I remember my mom saying telling me where she hid it we went back to my house and i was able to retrieve it and uh, and i loved it you know it gave me it reminded me how i wanted uh it, it gave me a little bit of hope that you know one day i'm going to return back to fighting and i'm going to defend this belt and you know it just it just made me happy it was just it's just it was just it's a it was a good distraction emotionally what is your current state at first it wasn't it wasn't easy um now i've kind of acclimated at first it was it was hard i wasn't sleeping well um you know i was i was very worried um i just didn't i just didn't feel good but now i've i've, I've calmed down and, and and i'm much better how does it feel to be leaving ukraine and returning to competition um i feel great um uh, you know, it's been it's been a little while since I left Ukraine, so I've I've able to kind of acclimate and calm down a little bit and, and be able to have some uh, uh, you know productive training and, and be focused on my training. Your upcoming fight with uh, Logan Stolley on the twenty fifth of February. Uh, did you see his fight with Michael Venom Page? Um, you know, you had the striker against the pure wrestler. Um, how do you feel about your chances of uh, defeating him on the 25th of February and um, are you feeling a renewed sense of motivation coming back from Ukraine about the fight? Yeah, I saw the fight. I mean, I can't say I was surprised. I, I kind of expected that to happen. I think the only way uh, MVP was going to win that uh, fight is if, you know, he would have landed a punch or had some kind of knockout, but I was 80% confident that Storley is going to win the fight. Um, as far as my fight, um, he said, "Listen, I obviously have a have a, a whole different level of motivation um, to perform well for my country, to point out, you know, to put my country on the map, be able to raise my country's flag, 